Boatworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boatworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. Over the past few months, I have gotten a lot of emails from people asking me if I had any, any knowledge or experience with this new paint that has come out by EMC, or Engineered Marine Coatings. The, the paint line that they're asking about specifically is their Quantum 99 line. And I hadn't. I, I really didn't know anything about it. I'd never heard of it. So, you know, I did a little bit of research, and uh, it sounds like, on paper, it sounds like this could be a very, very attractive paint for, you know, for, DIY, uh, for DIYers. Uh, it can be rolled or sprayed, but unlike, I, I guess, all grip is what I am most familiar with, but all grip, again, as you may, may know, has two different lines. They have actual all grip, and then they have all craft. Now, just very briefly, the difference between those two paints, all grip can be rolled or sprayed, but the, the catch there is that you can't really repair it. You can't wet sand it out and then polish out you know, a repair. That's why I suspect they came out with their all craft line. Uh, all craft can be applied by spray only. You cannot roll and tip it. So it's a spray only, but you can come back, you can wet sand it, you can polish it out, and it makes your, you know, any, any ooboos or repairs just basically go away. So, so looking at that line, there are some advantages and disadvantages of both of those lines. Now, getting back to this Quantum uh, 99 paint, it can be rolled or sprayed, but regardless of how you apply it, they claim that you can come back and wet sand and polish it out. That sounds like a win, you know, that's like the best of both worlds. So you can, no matter, you know, what method you have to apply it, it's going to work, so they claim. So what I did is I reached out to, uh, to Jamestown Distributors. They're one of the, I guess, one of the main uh, sellers for this paint. And they, in turn, put me in contact with John Boswell, who is one of the, one of the co-owners of EMC, or, you know, the, is heavily involved with this quantum, uh, quantum line of paint. So a few exchanges back and forth with some emails, and they sent me off what they call their genius bucket. Now, I haven't opened this yet. This is still all sealed. This is exactly the way I've got it. It's been sitting in my shop for about eh, maybe close to two months now. I just I haven't had time to get to this video, but... Uh, but supposedly in this, in this Genius bucket kit is everything that you need to paint, I think they said up to a 25-foot boat, you know, or at least the hull, you know, not including the decks or anything, but a 25-foot hull. So I guess first things first, I want to open this up and actually see what all is in here. Okay, so what's in this kit? A uh, couple of scouring pads, looks like cleaning cleaning towels, basically some masking. Here's the catalyst, or the activator. Uh, the reducer, this is for, this is their brushing reducer. Here's their surface prep cleaner. A couple of buckets with some rubber gloves. Let's see what all is in here. Let's see, the roller, rolling frame, and four of these uh, foam uh, cigar style rollers, rollers. A couple of trays regular old foam brushes, instructions, and then two cans of the paint or the base. I, uh, I asked them to send me some flag blue. Now, because this is a new paint to me, I've, I've never used it. I've never even seen what it looks like after it's been applied. I, I am not going to take and do an experiment on an actual project, you know, because if it works, you know, then, you know, I got lucky. But if it's, if I'm not happy with it, then I just created a lot more work for myself. So I always do testing on every product before I actually bring it to an actual project. So the, uh, the test sample that I'm gonna be using today is, uh, again, it's my standard test sample. This is like a, I don't know, close to a, I don't know, almost a three by three foot fiberglass panel um, that's been painted and gel coated probably a dozen, <laughs> a dozen different times. But, Right now, I'm gonna be going over a painted surface. The material that's on here right now is all craft. Okay, the, the instructions they give you are, are pretty good. You know, pretty good. I mean, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, basically, the, 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 the first step in everything is gonna be cleaning, you know, cleaning and prep. Uh, that's gonna basically determine how the rest of the project's going to go. So, the, the first thing I'm gonna do on here, because this is already, this is an existing painted surface. 
Um, I think it's clean, but I don't know. I want to make sure. So the first thing I'm going to do, and what they recommend, is to basically go over the surface with uh, some soap water. Now, if you're going to be doing this over gel coat, you know, and your gel coat is, you know, oxidized, kind of chalky, you know, going over or doing this step with some with some soap water and one of these green Scotch Brite pads, it's going to remove a lot of that chalkiness. It's going to dull the surface, but we're not looking to restore the gel coat. We're looking to paint over it. So, uh, this should uh, create, you know, a, a, a pretty good tooth for the paint to adhere to, and also remove any surface contaminants that are on there and kind of get the surface, you know, ready ready to go to the next step. First things first, this is just uh, Dawn dish soap and water. Now I will say that before we start painting this, this is not a perfectly flat panel. This is my test panel. I didn't put a whole lot of time into getting it perfectly flat. So I'm fully expecting to see, you know, kind of a, a little bit of a funny mirror effect after the paint is applied, you know, if providing that it's a good, smooth, uh, smooth coat. Uh, but that that's, is, isn't going to be any kind of a judgment on the quality of the paint. That's just the, 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 you know, the, the, substrate, the substrate that it's being applied to. So, okay, so now, with the, with the surface cleaned and, and scratched or you know, scuffed up, uh, the next thing that they, we need to do is come back and do a solvent wipe on this. And for that, again, anytime that we're working with solvents, I'm gonna try and keep the stuff off my skin, so. Surface prep cleaner is the first one I opened. Now, I suspect, because this is a two-part paint, I suspect there's gonna be some pretty strong fumes. That's just kinda of how paint is. Uh, so, if you are doing this in an enclosed area, make sure you've got some good ventilation or wear a respirator. I'm, my shop here is large enough. Uh, I've got enough um, vo air volume in here. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about it. If I, get a little, if I get a little loopy, I'll turn on my air system, but right now, I wanna keep that off as long as I can, just to, so the audio is good. Okay. Uh, when you're solvent wiping, you generally do a two rag process. So you've got one rag to basically uh, saturate the, the, the cleaning solvent onto the surface. So one rag to apply it and a clean rag to wipe it back off. Okay, now come back with a clean dry rag. So that's clean, that's prepped, that's ready to go. So now the next thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start mixing up my paint. Uh, the way that they, the way that the, you're supposed to mix this is basically two to one to one. So it'll be two parts of the, uh, the, the paint base, and then one part of catalyst, one part of reducer. So for example, since this is a small panel, I'm gonna be doing, and I'm gonna be mixing up a small batch. You know, I don't wanna mix up a, a a full quart and then waste most of it. You know, I'm only gonna be able to do one coat today and one coat tomorrow, just because I need to check out early today. So, what I'm gonna be doing is, uh, since it's two to one to one, I'm gonna mix up four ounces of base, and then two ounces of catalyst, two ounces of reducer. All right, now with everything in there, I'm just gonna mix everything up very, very well. So now, I think we're ready to start rolling on our first coat. Let me go over the surface one last time. Yeah, I don't care if I get dust in here, but I just, I don't want to have it like non-skid texture with dust. <laughs> I'm gonna try and minimize it as much as I can. Okay, I'm gonna take one of their trays. Now they generally say, or they say in here that they, uh, they recommend a minimum of two coats. Uh, on some colors, typically on your darker colors, you're, you're gonna wanna do a third coat. And also just for, so that you have a little extra material there for if you need to do any wet sanding or buffing out you know, uh, down the road. So for longevity, 
If you have the material to do three coats, I probably would, but that's, that's just me. I mean, as long as you're in the painting mode, you know, just knock it out. All right, now here's the deal. Whenever you're rolling paint on, whether it's this quantum paint or all grip or any kind of paint, the trick is to basically to roll it on in as thin a coat as you possibly can while still getting coverage. Not full coverage, but so you're getting a uniform coverage. Even on light colors, light colors or dark, it doesn't matter. Do not expect to get full hiding or full coverage of the paint with the first coat. If, you, if that happens, you're, you're laying it on too thick. Now, if you watch when, uh, when I'm doing this, I'm gonna basically load up the roller and I'm gonna try and squeeze as much paint as I possibly can back off of this. All right, so let's give this a whirl. I generally start on, well, I'm right-handed, so I like to work from left to right, but I'm gonna start in the middle And although we, I forced out as much paint as I possibly could, I'm not going to have to re-roll or re, uh, you know, re-apply uh, paint to this roller. This is going to be enough for the whole, for this whole coat. Now, when I apply this, you generally have about a minute to a minute and a half to come back and and. Uh, basically smooth out any kind of roll marks. But the trick with this, and with painting in general, is after you apply it, just leave it. Leave it alone, let the, uh, let the solvent do its thing, let the material flow out and level. And that's that. And I could probably do another area of this size without having to re you know, re-soak uh, this roller. So right now, I'm just gonna walk away and leave this be for, uh, for a few minutes just to see how it settles. Now, if you look right here, I did have, I did leave one white mark just so that we can kind of gauge what kind of coverage we're, uh, we're getting on this. So as you can see, the first coat did not get full coverage because we can still see that white dot. So for right now, I guess we're pretty much hands off. They, uh, they say that you can come back and reapply the second coat after this has, after it feels dry to the touch, which they say, you know, in 70, 75 degree weather is about three to four hours. I'm not gonna be able to get to that today. Uh, unfortunately, I have to leave before that, uh, before that time can pass, but I will be in tomorrow morning, basically to reapply a second coat and see, see how it looks. This has been a Bootworks Today Protection.